I mentioned that this point of the 80s had a lot of idols. A lot of idols would show up, be a flash in the pan, and then go away, and very few had hung on. Also, new methods of marketing were tried at the time. Idols had to embody a certain image. Clean, pure, and a girl next door. Sometimes they were saccharine to a point. They were less mysterious than the 70s idols, but carefully scripted less mysterious. Add the charm and a cute outfit, and there you go! Be cute! Have sex appeal, but don't be too sexy. still see this in practice today, and it got worse. Look at Oyanko Club and AKB48 Oyanko Club Part 2 The Return, The Reckoning, Electric Boogaloo. In the anime world, magical girls were already an established genre. We mentioned Little Witch Sally, but we also had Akochan, Makochan, Melmo, Cutie Honey, Loon Loon, Lalabel, Meguchan, Minky Momo, and all of this went into today's subject, Creamy Mommy. Creamy Mommy was the first of the Studio Perot Magical Girl series that dominated the genre for a chunk of the 80s, with Persia, Magica Emmy, and Pastel Yumi. With the tropes of Magical Girl elements, it established its usage in idol anime. Look at the outfit sequence in Prepara and Aikatsu and notice that it's not that different from Magical Girl transformations like Sailor Moon. It also established the use of mascots in idol anime by borrowing that from Magical Girl shows such as Loon Loon the Flower Child or Minky Momo. Studio Perot continued the formula of Creamy Mommy in their other Magical Girl shows and later in 1998 with Fancy Lala. Before Creamy Mommy, idol anime was just for promoting an already established idol, but they did something different. Creamy Mommy is known for pioneering the media mix, a strategy to disperse content across different media. This practice is still used today with Wake Up Girls or Love Live School Idol Project. You could argue that it has been done before in idol anime with Pink Lady or Sue Cat, but what sets it apart is that they got an unknown idol, Takako Ota, and made them a star. Takako Ota's first song in the real world was Delicate Ni Tsukishite, and it's the theme for Creamy Mommy. She also wasn't trained as a voice actress. She pretty much only voices you slash Creamy Mommy with a part in Nausicaa and Arion. Otherwise, she hasn't voiced much outside of Creamy Mommy, except she did release 26 albums and did a small comeback in 2008. What I'm saying is she's doing fine. <laughs> With all that said, what is this series about? Let's start at the beginning. It's one of the best, weirdest first episodes I've ever seen. It's my favorite magical girl beginning. Enter, you Morisawa. She sees something in the sky. Her parents want her to help out to the shop, while her love interest and his friend, wannabe love interest, comes to see her. She steals her dad's scooter. Scooter. They call it that, but really, what is this thing? Her parents can't chase her. They're making crepes. So the boys do, who get hit by a car, but safe because the fat one punches the car. He's out by a lamppost. Toshio, the other boy, steals a bike. And she's going so fast the cops start chasing her on a stolen bike, and then you get the cop cars. And we're at the point I think the director watched Blues Brothers. Then the Air Patrol. Seriously, how many stars does you have at this point? The Air Patrol is going down, and then things get weird. Then Noah's Ark shows up. Then Talking Cats, Alien Abduction, Tron, Naked Fairies, Ocelot, Deer, Thing, Antelope, whatever. Roman clothes! And now she's fighting fish! And fighting dragons! Then Featherstar. S seriously, this is this is a magical girl anime. This is the idol show, I promise you. Yeah. 
She's then thanked by Pino Pino, the alien, who send her off with a power she could use for one year that's further explained by the talking cats. They're Pazzi and Nega, by the way. And the magic turns her into an older young woman. And that's the first episode. There's first episodes, and then there's Creamy Mommy's first episode. That's not a normal magical girl or idol first episode. In fact, the second episode is the idol aspect's first episode. We get introduced to the rival, Megumi. We get introduced to how Yu uses her magic in an idol's context. We get introduced to producers, managers, and fanboy Wota, like Toshio. Seriously, he's 10 glow sticks short of a brain. What's interesting is that she refuses the idol role at first and doesn't want to be on TV and things like that. She gets convinced by her crush really liking Creamy Mommy. She gets convinced by getting roped in by Megumi. And good old fashioned kidnapping! Nothing like kidnapping to get you in the show business. Also, this is a gem-like situation where the love interest doesn't know that the same girl is both. Unlike gem, there's actual payoff. Also, how does she get paid? She's not only 10, but Creamy Mommy isn't her legal name either. Either way, she starts making bank. Obviously. At least let her buy some, I don't know, whatever Japanese kids like. Scooters that don't look like scooters. Among the ongoing conflicts, we have Snake Joe, a slimy reporter trying to make a scandal. We have Megumi trying to figure out whether Mommy and you are the same person, and creepy Toshio's friend, Midori, also her sneaking around for her job as an idol. The series has the idol part, but with all this magic, there's also adventure, like finding the black stag, the ghost, or Mr. Dream. The way the magic works is strange. Other than using it to transform, it can affect things around her. An example is the Doppelganger episode. It actually is a great episode that dealt with the purity aspect of idols that was prevalent in the 80s and how fans can demand a certain image. The magic can also lead to weird stuff. Also, sitcom stories like her parents fighting and then her dad getting in a motorcycle gang. Or a devil making bad crepes. Or other magic and idol hijinks. It's fun to see how Mommy uses her magic in other situations to help solve problems. This is more like Magical Girl anime before it. I'm glad for both of those aspects being a huge part of the show. It ties the elements together well, however in the first part of the series I feel it needs more balance. There was a run of the magic episodes and a few of the sitcom episodes in a row, until getting back onto the idol kick again. After the midway point of episode 26 we get more character defining moments for everyone. You get to see you be determined, see her fail, see how she deals with it. The plot isn't pulling her around like in the first half. With you and Toshio, you notice their relationship starts to change. They're still kids, so they still tease each other, but you can tell that there's some love there. I have to admit, I love Yu's parents. They get some great scenes and dialogue with each other. And they aren't the anime parents that aren't present or just background characters in the protagonist's life, but they're fleshed out people, fleshed out characters that are actually there. Care for Yu staying out late doing her magical girl idol thing and they really do love her, and show it. The idol part of the series takes over a bit more than the magical, rule-building comedy sitcom of the first half. Since this anime had 52 episodes, they had room to play with all of those elements than a 13-episode show. What I can say is that this show is creative. It's an anime I think everyone should try. If it had an English dub, I would recommend this to children, but mostly it's for those who love classic anime. I also recommend this to everyone wanting to see an icon of Magical Girl anime and Idol anime. If not for that, watch it for the weirdness. I love this pastel 80s-tastic show. I can't help to think that if this was made today, it would be like a Disney Channel sitcom. So maybe Hannah Montana with that wizard show or whatever. And there's more. There's OVAs. Magical Angel Creamy Mommy Forever Once More is directly after the series. The synopsis for it is, two months after Creamy Mommy's final concert, rumors begin to spread that Mommy was making a comeback. And if that wasn't surprising enough, Tachibana starts a big project that seems to have something to do with Mommy's comeback. As word of Mommy's concert reaches the public, Yu doesn't believe it. Yu, Megumi, Toshio, Midori, Kitokoro make a plan to get to the bottom of it. 
The Long Goodbye is about Shingo playing the film A Story of Two Worlds, starring Megumi, and Yu's transformation into Creamy Mommy happening without her wanting it. She's asked to star in a film too. I haven't seen either because I can't find them with English subtitles. So I watched them in Spanish and tried to follow along. Magical Angel Creamy Mommy Lovely Serenade is just 30 minutes of clips from the show over songs. It's basically a long music video. The same is for the OVA Curtain Call. But the most memorable OVAs are the crossovers. Do you know about the other Studio Perot Magical Girls? In Adesugata Maho no Sanen Musume, Yu teams up with Magical Emi and Fairy Persia for a sleepover at an onsen. I love crossovers in anime because it doesn't happen that often. I'm a sucker for this sort of thing. This one is like a sleepover with the characters talking about themselves and two other characters on a phone while watching clips from their anime. The sleepover is just a framing device for a clip show from three different series. It's skippable, but it's only great if you love all three of these series. You get to see a little dance number and mascots at the end, so there's that clip worth seeing. The OVA you should watch is when Mommy, Persia, Emmy, and the fourth Pastel Yumi in a battle against aliens. It's an all new story with a tentacle monster. No, not like that, you pervs. They wreak havoc and they make people old. What's the government response? Magical girls, all of them. Kidnapping, the solution for all your little girl needs. This is the crossover that's worth seeing. It makes me excited and I'm a sucker for crossovers, as I said, and I love to see this with Sailor Moon, Madoka, and whoever else they could get. This is what the other Studio Perot Magical Girl crossover should have been. And one more crossover for the road. Remember when I mentioned Minky Momo? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Get ready, America, for the biggest brawl of the liberty of the century. The biggest rivals will go head to head. It was just a commercial for the respective OVAs coming out, but it was cute and I loved seeing the two studios work together with their icons. Magical Angel Creamy Mommy finally got a US release through the streaming site Anime Souls. Later, Anime Souls crowdfunded all DVD box sets and they were successful. Unfortunately, Anime Souls announced their shutdown in April 2015 and was gone by May 1st, 2015. Then we got news that whatever is left of the DVD stock will be destroyed if left unsold. You can buy this and other Anime Souls series on Right Stuff and Amazon, but I don't know for how long. Is this worth a watch? If I haven't made it clear, go buy the DVDs. Check out all the merch that came out during the 30th anniversary and try this fun, cute idol anime. So far, we looked at four shows Sasurai no Tayo, Pink Lady Monogatari, Sue Cat, and Creamy Mommy. Those four anime together make up all the tropes you see in idol shows from now on. Mascots, drama, rivals, managers, love, otaku, and the struggles of show business. Creamy Mommy introduced the magical elements of idol shows while the rest are the more realistic sides. Next we look at a show that represents what those four anime started. Idol Densetsu Eriko. It's 1989. Coco, known for doing songs that were in Ranma One Half, started. Oyanko Club ended in 1987. Wink, a pop idol duo, Asuka Yuri, and Ria Miyazawa were making hits. Idols still came and went, however, and anime has been a proven vehicle for idol promotion. Creamy Mommy was the proof of idol promotion with anime success. 1989 had Idol Densetsu Eriko and another anime I will be talking about later, Assemble Insert. Eriko Tamura, aka Sakamoto Eriko, nicknamed Eriren or Ellie Lin, started at age 14. She auditioned and won the Grand Prix for the All Japan Song Selection You're the Star Contest. Other places you may know her is when she played Princess Yeiko in NBC's Heroes and it was Mai in Dragon Ball Evolution we won't hold the last thing against her. She released her first single, Locomotion Dream, in March 1989. Three weeks later, the anime Idol Densetsu Eriko premiered on TV. It seems a lot to happen in a short time, but when you're doing a media mix, tons of stuff gets thrown at the wall to make a hit. Why not a 51 episode anime? So it worked for Creamy Mommy, 
Does Erica hold a candle to what came before? You can't help but compare. Mommy has cats. Erica has dogs. Mommy has magic. Erico has suffering by many people. This anime was made by Aishi Productions, known for creating Minky Momo. Let's get introduced. Erico is the daughter of the CEO of Tamura Productions, a talented, nice 14 year old that doesn't want to be a singer despite that. She lives large, big house, two cars, and that's going to be shred to pieces because anime. Or the Flash of Destiny. That bastard. Before the ceremonial opening of the Marine Dome, her parents got in a car accident that left her dad dead and her mom in a coma, leaving all of this to her evil uncle, Eric Raymond! No, but it's his controlling brother Kyosuke Tamura who then make Eriko's life worse as he takes over the company and family fortune. He makes Eric Raymond look like a b Right out the gate we have some interesting side characters. Her expelled motorcycle driving friend Yasuko and her rival, Rei. Eventually Eriko gets thrusted into the idol role and uses her gift to calm a crowd trying to escape an underground music dome shaking without many escape routes. Seriously, who puts a music venue under the water? Who does that without many elevators and other evacuation things? Bubble money, I'm telling ya. The other things that made her become an idol was encouragement and encouragement from a song that her dad wrote for her. On the bad side, her uncle is seeing dollar signs and wants to capitalize on it. And she has even more enemies in this show. Break the cutie, the anime. One thing I love about this series is the pacing. Each episode is quick and it doesn't linger too long on things and has a dramatic cliffhanger to keep you wanting to watch. It lends well to binging. I got distracted from taking notes because I was getting too engrossed. What's next after dead parents? Abusive uncles, rivals, and other stuff. Maybe a little attempted murder. Yeah, being Eriko is suffering. Eriko just seems to be pulled around. Is she enduring the hardship she's facing to stay sane and has silent strength? Or is it the passive training that an Ojo-sama, debutante, small lady of the house gets? I also think she has too many deer in the headlight moments. She has a support system and all, but they can't be there for her 24-7 and she needs to learn how to take care of herself or decide for herself. On the other hand, she's 14 years old. Her entire life changed in the span of three weeks. Anime characters need therapy. But just once, I wanted to cuss someone out. After everything, I just wanted to be like, You mother How dare You pumpkin eating Brush. We do finally get her standing up to her uncle once. I'll show them how proved that I can be The show is more of the backstage politics, blackmail, backstabbing, evil side of entertainment. In comparison to what came before, this is edgy and hardcore. It also has various other villains trying to take down Eriko. I'm glad some drama was averted. It seemed like a love triangle was going to sprout with Eriko, Rei, and another character, Shogo. But even the plot doesn't have time for that. Instead, Rei has a billion other reasons to be a rival to Eriko. And friend. And rival some more. Eriko's dad was Rei's father figure. His death still had a hold on the series, which I like. It gave character inspiration or motivation. Too much drama though, this anime is built on it. There isn't any break. There's less drama, and then there's more drama, but there's never a drama free zone for a while. You start to wish for a nice breather episode. Even the ones I say are, aren't in a small way. But at least things aren't as bleak later on. Eriko finally gets some victories and some confidence in her singing. The most unfortunate part is that there isn't any more subbed. Will someone pick this up and fan sub it? Hey, it's 2018 Vega here. 
So when I made this about three years ago, there was only that many episodes subbed, but now we're actually up to 39. So at least we have a little bit more seeing Eriko get shit on by life in the industry somehow, and her being resilient because she is an awesome, awesome idol character. And on the original Idols of Anime YouTube channel, people would constantly ask, Hey, are you going to talk about the rest of the episodes? Hey, they put up some more episodes. Are you going to talk about them? And, you know, I didn't really answer it, but yes, now I will be on the Odegal podcast. Gonna be just one episode at a time, but you can see my thoughts on them there on this channel. And I'm going to start doing that soon. So back to Idols of Anime, now in progress. Even better, can someone license this? The only reason I say that is because there isn't an official release at this time. If there ever is, please support it. There's also a three volume manga, but that isn't available either. Sigh. There was also the OVA, The Prelude, which was a compilation of music videos. Another thing that's bothersome is her speaking voice and her singing voice is radically different. <laughs> Akiko Yajima is the voice of Eriko. She's known for being Dorothy from Big O, Black Butler's Angela, and her biggest role, Shin-Chan. I liked her acting, but they should have chosen a voice closer to her singing voice. Or just have Eriko Tamura voice her character as well. There's a disconnect that's hard to get over. It's distracting. The music I really enjoy. The opening I keep on my phone to listen to, too. I tried Erika Tamura's other music thanks to the show. It's a throwback pop idol I think you should try. Speaking of music, Shokotan did a cover of Locomotion Dream on her fourth cover album. Idol Densetsu Eriko, or Legendary Idol Eriko, is worth watching. It might be too dramatic without many breaks, but it starts to lighten up later on. I watched this years ago and didn't like it. Me and my friends just rifted away and forgot about it. Now with fresh eyes 10 years later, I think I respect it more. I also kick myself for forgetting about this for a long time. But the reason I forgot it is because it's pretty forgettable. It has a lot of big names involved. Masami Yuki, the creator of Pat Labor. Norio Wakamoto, a famous seiyu known for roles like Kuchiro Coach Ota in Gunbuster, Chiyo's father in Azumanga Daio, and Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Or Kikuko Inoue, known for many, many roles, including Ai Sanakawa of My Love Story, Belle Dandy of All My Goddess, and my introduction to her work was Misty May in Otaku no Video. And she also plays an idol in the anime. She plays Corvette in Idol Project from 1995. This anime is made of mecha, comedy, villains, and idols, but does it hold up since the 80s? Assemble Insert is a two-episode OVA. The Tokyo Police made a task force led by Chief Hattori to deal with the Demon Seed, a group of thieves that destroy using mecha. They aren't successful at thinking of an idea to counter them but a drunken idea led to having an addition to find someone who can. They find Marin, a 13-year-old timid clumsy moe blob that has incredible super strength. They use her to fight the demon seed and manage her idol career. Whew. Hold on a sec. I need a break. Is the commercial over already? Yeah. Seriously, after you see that commercial, you just gotta have one. Ah, <sighs> much better. Assemble Insert is a parody of cliches of the time and is a satire of the life of a government worker. It's a manic comedy, but this will really depend on what you choose. 
Welcome to the age-old debate of dub versus sub. Spend so much time fighting over dubs or subs that we miss the big picture. The dub is flat. It really affects the energy of the comedy. And since this is a comedy, the delivery is ruined. All depend on this top secret project. But Chief Atori, this project is pretty outrageous. Holding auditions to pick people to fight the demon seed. Who the hell proposed this crazy idea? I proposed. I was drunk when I submitted the project and they approved it anyway. You got a problem with that? I just can't take this cruel world anymore. <laughs> uh oh. You made him cry, jerk. <laughs> Also, the dub changed Marin from 13 years old to a high school senior. I suggest watching this subtitled, hands down. The comedy can range from slapsticky to subtle to absurd to running gag to cynical to just well played in general. Some of the parody parts may go over your head if you're watching this well into the far future of 2015, but some of the comedy is timeless. The live action Supo Vitan C commercial is a parody of the energy drink Lipo Vitan B. Japanese energy drink commercials work that way a lot. Needs more Arnold Schwarzenegger. Fans of Pat Labor or things like Project Aiko will like it way more than me. And I can appreciate the legends involved in this, but it's still forgettable. The major problem I have is that Marin doesn't seem to have any moments outside of just being clumsy or shy or kicking butt. Some of the task force were annoying, and I didn't like their insistence of making the decision for Marin on being the fighter or idol. Also, some parts go too fast to enjoy, like a blink and you miss it. The songs are only okay. Not memorable, but serviceable for the show. Some of the comedy holds up even if you miss half of it due to not knowing a reference or just it going by too quick. It's only an hour in total, so you won't waste too much time watching it, but many seem to like this a lot. Use it as a palate cleanser after a binge watch, or watch it with some friends. The DVD came out in America twice. It's out of print, but you can still find copies on Amazon or other retailers for cheap, usually under 10 bucks. When I get to the 13 episode 2006 series, I'll go more into it. But in 1987, there were shorts for late night TV. Lemon Angel are Shima Erika, Sakurai Tomo, and Emoto Miki. And they were in 47 five minute episodes. Some of which you can find on YouTube, but it isn't an idol anime in content. In fact, it's pretty Skinamax. Fan servicey. Etchy. I think in one video, a girl is seen about being a vulnerable lowly. The anime wasn't so much about being an idol, but I have to mention it due to the fact that it was used to promote Lemon Angel in anime form first. That 1980s bubble money gone to people's heads, I tell ya. Today we have Idol Tenshi Yokoso Yoko. Yokoso Yoko was created by Aishi Productions, the same studio that did Idol Densetsu Eriko and Minky Momo. They tried to do the Eriko thing with an idol named Yoko Tanaka. Yoko Tanaka, or Yokune, started in 1989 when she won the grand prizes for the audition contest Party Pro Talent Scout Caravan and The Audition. She debuted with the release of Haru no Passage, or some places listed as Yoshin no Passage. It's the anime's theme song. She had a TV career and did some modeling, but the idol world was too much for her and she retired very quickly. What do I know about the anime? It has an idol. It has a squirrel. There's a squirrel. There's a blue girl. And some squirrel. 
cute opener. From Anime News Network, the plot is, a young girl and her flying squirrel goes to Tokyo in hopes of becoming an idol singer. On the way, she meets another girl who wants to become an actress, and together they work to achieve their dreams. This web series used to be a panel I did at conventions. Back then, I couldn't find any clips on this series, but in the years since, there has been more stuff on her. I wonder if I had effect on that. I hope I did because I was really curious about this anime. Before, all I had was the opening and this clip. Oh, fantastic! She's a young Japanese singer and oh no, mother Tamago. Yes, yes, singer's egg. Oh, good looking, good song. Thank you very much. Such a. Excuse me! Yakin sign the sign. Your song is good, wonderful! Hi! Watashimo! Watashimo! Hi! The one criticism I have is just like the criticism I have for Eriko. The voice of Yoko and the singing from Yoko Tanaka differ too greatly. It's distracting. There are 10 episodes on YouTube without subs at this time, so I can't talk about it in depth. What I can glean from it is that it runs on cute hijinks and friendship. In reality, there's 43 episodes and it isn't fan subbed, nor does it have an official release in the US. I hope I can gather interest in this series. It looks too adorable to pass up. I want to see more more from this strange older sister of Chibi Yusa. Kimama ni Idol, or Willful Idol, is a one hour OVA by Toei. Is about three girls wanting to make it to the top as idols. It begins with two well to do girls breaking their parents' wishes to go away and be famous. They meet up with a third in the city. It's based on a manga in Comic Burger by Kenichi Koda. It isn't scanlated. And with the lack of a fan sub, there's not much I could talk about. There's some cringe factors like trying to force them into a porno. Luckily, revenge is taken. This was an attempt at a media mix. The three lead voice actresses took the stage for real. I guess it didn't work out as well because does anyone even remember this? There's one thing I did remember. This is technically the first anime about a group of idols. Pink Lady counts as a duo and Sukat didn't get one till way later in her series. But these three were together at the start of their career as an idol group, so at least it can be remembered for that. It's really hard to talk about this without a fan sub or a license, so can someone get on that? Please? It looks okay. I mean, come on. It even has a cameo from Pizzazz. Idols fighting rock stars. I feel like this represents what the 90s became for idols. In the 90s, idols started to wane as the rise of J-Rock and Visual K got bigger. The former image of 80s idols was giving way to the 90s idol. The 90s will bring new things like net idols, morning musume, and former idols changing their image into something else, and succeeding at that. Or not. Idols in anime will be tackling those aspects soon enough. But next time we're going less realistic. We're looking at Idol Defense Force Hummingbird.